thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Delighted to be here, and um, I think this builds ever so slightly uh, in my enthusiasm from, entrepreneur from an entrepreneurial perspective and how we support entrepreneurship. And um, uh, I really, I know I met one or two of you at our uh, CEB conference that we had about women in business and how we encourage more women in, in business. Uh, and uh, I see you waving the heat, it's terrible, it's called a power surge. <laughs> 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 and uh, there's one thing I get from meeting women like yourselves is the power surge of entrepreneurship. Uh, and I just want to commend, first of all, the Chambers, uh, and we're saying coming many, uh, all the best. I, I was a great colleague of our net brother for many, many years. And uh, I do distinctly remember, actually, just to share with you, he was one of the first people that took on the Small Business Forum. And uh, he gave me a handwritten copy. And I thought, oh, God, this is shameless looking for me to do something for him, which was to read it. Mm -hmm. and it was a huge document. And at the bottom, he says, give me a woman's perspective, yeah. which was very much wh where, where he came from himself. And I'm very much uh, enthusiastic, first of all, about entrepreneurship. You cannot buy an entrepreneur. You can't teach an entrepreneur. All you can do is provide the climate, the skills, and the support to allow entrepreneurship to develop and grow. And I will, in the beginning of uh, next year, be launching a new entrepreneurship policy. And I very much want you guys to be very key to that. Uh, and um, really, I think that some of the issues that have been raised by uh, women in business have been now very similar to what men are saying in business. The first thing is access to capital uh, and how you can get the supports necessary in order to make decisions. Uh, and uh, also taking a risk. And you cannot be risk averse if you're going to be an entrepreneur. And one of the things that I want to achieve in the context of, of uh, supporting entrepreneurship, uh, and I know that many of my state agencies are very cognizant of the need to take risk within, of course, the, the proprieties that are there, but how you can encourage particularly the banking sector to be very cognizant of the fact that it is a risk-taking business to support people in business, but the people have the acumen to create wealth, uh, and that's where the support needs to be. Secondly, in education, and I'm delighted to see that uh, the higher, uh, the HEA has now long last discovered that you need to have business as part of much of the educational provision that they have. And I do remember when uh, the former CEO of uh, Kerry met me, Kerry Group, good Donegal man, said to me, these are great uh, food technologists down in Cork, uh, and he's totally enamored about their standard of education, the wonderful acumen, how they would be fantastic in R&D, but they couldn't sell anything. <laughs> so everybody who unfortunately got a job in Kerry got six months thriving down in sausages. <laughs> it was a lesson well learned and something I shared with the HEA and they said, yes, you have to have a marketing and a concept uh, as well as having the academic. Uh, that anything you make is for the market, it's not because you necessarily like to make it for yourself. And really these are skills that we cannot teach anyone, there are skills that are learned and people like yourselves, I hope, as ambassadors will really encourage and enthuse people to get into business and particularly for women to take that risk. Because women are a little bit more risk averse than men uh, and I've noticed under the GEM report and also in uh, writings in the Financial Times recently about the UK that their prediction is in the next 10 years there will be more women entrepreneurs than men in the UK. So now that's, <laughs> we have a little bit of work to do, but we're well fit to do it. I think equally it's important, uh, and it's something I find difficult, when I was appointed as Minister of Enterprise, Trade and Employment, I left the hallowed grounds of agriculture where I worked considerably with men, and not all men, because there are a lot of women were involved in farming and agriculture and food. And I thought, great, it'll not be all suits now when I go to all these meetings. It turned out to be the exact same as when I left agriculture. So we really need to do a little bit more. I certainly hope that these EU programs will give cognizance and recognition of the need of entrepreneurship. I know that when Commissioner Van Huygen was here, he was very, very supportive of the idea of the SME sector. It's the SME sector that is going to grow and develop this country. And, you know, another thing I was, I was taught uh, at a, an occasion where I met a great, a woman I very much admire from Scotland, good Donegal roots, the lady that created the Ultimo brand, you boys don't need to know about it. <laughs> <laughs> and she said to me, and I, I don't know if any of you have had a chance to hear her story, she came from abject poverty, uh, worked from she was 12 years of age, 
was very strident in what she wanted to achieve, uh, created uh, an underwear product that uh, worked out to be something that would create millions and millions and millions, lost the run of herself because of all her money, and decided when she was given the second chance she would do two things. One, she would never make the same mistake again. The second thing she would go back to what she was good at, which was designing and branding. She now is one of the richest women in the United Kingdom and one of the number one top of entrepreneurs in the UK and worldwide. And I suppose the lesson that I learned in my conversation with her, and she's a wonderful person, and we can all emulate the highs and lows that she went through, uh, including personal and otherwise, you never make the same mistake twice. And I'm sure people like yourselves with experience would say that, with lessons learned, if things don't work out, you try again. Take it from me, I'm 23 years old in this job. job. It was an odd bad day too. <laughs> uh, but you pick yourself up, you get out there, you drive it. And people like yourselves are ambassadors who will be very much to the forefront in encouraging people to take the steps. And also, uh, and the thing that I like is coaching and mentoring. And I know some of the EI people are here, and I'm sure the Chamber is also involved in providing opportunities for people to have that conversation you know, if you're talking to yourself all the time, you will give yourself an answer. It might be the right one. Whereas you can share your experience when you have opportunities for, uh, you know, to, to link in with people of leadership acumen. It really, really is hugely important. So I'm delighted to be here to launch the network. I wish it every, every success. I was invited to the launch by Maud. Unfortunately, I couldn't go uh, to be with her there in, in Sweden because, like myself, as a Deputy Prime Minister, she's hugely, hugely enthusiastic about women in business uh, and really wanted to make it one of the hallmarks of her presidency. So I'm delighted that uh, uh, we were able to, to take up that cudgel. I wish you all well. I'm sure I see you all on the circuit, as one might say. <laughs> uh, it's very important that we continue to be out there. It's a difficult time in business, we all know that. But, you know, out of recessionary times, you become very structured in making those decisions, the right decisions for you and your company. And you know, a lot of people, I hope, will continue to support our own entrepreneurs and what they provide, and that we break out of that mold. We've had a lot of women in education who didn't go into engineering, for example, didn't go into other subjects that were not necessarily what, what women would have had a natural, natural flair for. It's the same thing in politics. It's the same thing in business. And that's why you have to break out, break that glass ceiling, let's make smithereens of it. Sorry, boys. <laughs> but it is really where we're at. And we're not here to be adversarial about men in business, because I know in my business that most of my biggest supporters were actually men. Those were the people that encouraged you. That's not what we're at here. What we're here is to provide and enthuse and encourage people to take that step, to be entrepreneurs, and to be very confident about what they do. And a lot of it is to do about self-esteem, it's about self-confidence, it's about believing in yourself, and then as a consequence of all of that, that you can move forward and have success. And success can be just for yourself as a sole trader, or to move on and be a world international leader. And the CEBs and Enterprise Ireland and LEADER, all of those organizations are there to support and we've changed the number of the frameworks, particularly in the CEBs, so the start of business costs now will include everything as opposed to certain restrictive things, and hopefully as a consequence of today, uh, that we will get very good publicity about what is good in Ireland, and one of the great things about this country is we have fabulous entrepreneurs. So I wish you well, thank you very much for the opportunity to be here, and when you've made the first 10 million, give us a call, <laughs> we're more than delighted to go with you. And you know, we hold up our heads high in this country because unlike our European partners, and you never hear about it, we have actually increased our export growth in this country despite a recession compared to all of the bigger people in the sector. Because we're focused, we're an island, we do more for less, we do take the risks, and we have the capacity to do it because what we produce, people want. So thank you for the opportunity to be here. We wish you well, and congratulations to the Chambers.